Welcome everyone to the video lecture series on mechatronic systems. Today we are going to discuss about pneumatic systems. This particular topic is part of unit 3 of the course mechatronic systems. So this portion that is pneumatic systems will be covered in two parts. Right now we are taking up part 1. I am your course instructor Mr. Prashant Then. So let's get going. So before we discuss about the pneumatic systems, let us spend some time in understanding the background of this. So fluid power systems are the broad term which are used for describing pneumatic systems and hydraulic systems. So what is this fluid power systems? Just like you have electrical system, mechanical systems or electromechanical systems, we also have fluid power systems. Now what is this fluid power system? So fluid power system is a system in which the input to the system is fluid, basically a fluid. So the fluid may be an oil or a compressed air. So this fluid is then utilized to perform some useful mechanical work at the output. So we will be using the fluid to perform some mechanical work. So that is my fluid power system. So the fluid power systems are basically classified broadly into two types. One is hydraulics, the other one is pneumatics. Hydraulics basically utilizes incompressible fluids, which is for example oil, Incompressible fluids are the fluids whose uh, uh, volume doesn't change when they are subjected to, uh, you know, input pressure. The pneumatic system, on the other hand, basically make use of compressible fluids. The compressible fluids are the fluids whose volume will change when they are subjected to external pressure. And we will be utilizing compressed air as a medium in pneumatics. So that all you need to know here is hydraulics basically makes use of incompressible fluids and oil is preferred and pneumatics basically make use of compressible fluids where compressed air is utilized. So this is basically fluid power system. Now before going into the pneumatic part we may have to spend some time on underst in understanding the basic gas laws which, which are as follows. First, we will look into the Boyle's law, boyle marriott law. So, these laws are applicable for the pneumatic systems. That is why, because you know, we are making use of compressed air, air is a gas. So, these laws are applicable to the gases and here we are first discussing the first gas law that is Boyle's Marriott law. Now as per this law, what this law states is, you can just have a look at this graph. So on my y-axis there is pressure, on my x-axis I have volume. So as you can see, this P and V is inversely proportional right so when the pressure is high the volume is low and when the volume is high the pressure is low so this can be illustrated using these figures we can see here suppose if i have a fixed volume of gas or the fixed volume of air in an enclosed chamber now if i apply the force on this so as you can see in the default situation in the default situation or default scenario, it has volume 1 and P1, that is pressure 1. When I apply or when I increase the force, volume gets decreased. But if volume is getting decreased, certainly the pressure in this portion will be higher. So pressure is increased. So P2 is greater than P1 compared to these two situations. Now, if I increase the force further, the air further gets compressed or the gas further gets compressed, the volume has further reduced and again the pressure has increased. So what Boyle's law states as is the volume of a fixed amount of gas 
is inversely proportional to the absolute pressure at constant temperature. Now here, this phenomenon is observed at constant temperature. That needs to be kept in mind. So when the volume is decreasing, the pressure is increasing and it is vice versa. So in other words, Boyle's law states that the product of volume and absolute pressure is constant for a fixed amount of gas. So this can be mathematically represented as follows. You can see P1V1 is equal to P2V2. In this, these three cases, P1V1 is equal to P2V2, which is equal to P3V3, which is always constant. So this is Boyle's Marriott law. So next, we are going to take up one more law, which is known as Gay-Lussac's law. Now, Gay-Lussac's law basically establishes the relationship between the pressure and the temperature of a pneumatic system. So here, Gay-Lussac's law states that the volume of a fixed amount of gas is proportional to its absolute temperature. So you can see in this figure, the initial states, you can see the volume, the volume is fixed. This V, this portion indicates the volume, this volume is fixed. The fixed amount of gas, the, the volume of the fixed amount of gas is proportional to its absolute temperature. Is to its proportional to its absolute temperature. So what this basically implies is the pressure P changes when the temperature also changes. But the ratio of pressure to the temperature will always remain constant. That is P by T is always constant. So you can see the P and T is directly proportional here. So the same thing the same thing you can you can have a look at this in this particular figure. This is the initial state which is P1 T1. The volume remains constant. This is the final state. The pressure has increased. The temperature also has increased. The volume remains constant. But the ratio of P1 T1 is equal to the ratio of P2 V2, P2 T2, right? So that is basically is gay lussacs law. So next we'll look into the third law, which is Charles law. The Charles law basically states that if you see the volume, volume is directly proportional to the temperature of a system at constant pressure. Right. So when you have a constant pressure, the when the volume increases, the temperature also increases. So you can see this in the initial state, the pressure is there is some fixed amount of pressure. The pressure is not changing. The volume is less in this case. So V1 T1 and when the volume has expanded, naturally the temperature also has changed. And as you can see, so the ratio of volume to the temperature, the ratio of the volume to the temperature always remain constant when, when you maintain the pressure constant, right? So this is basically Charles law. So this can be described here. V1 by T1 is equal to V2 by T2. So these are the three different laws, Charles law, Gase Lussac's law and Boyle Marriott law. So these are three laws. All these three laws can be combined to form a general gas equation law, which can be simply mentioned in mathematical terms as P1V1 divided by T1 is equal to P2V2 divided by T2. Right? So that is a general gas equation law in which all these three laws are basically combined. So next, I hope this, this makes sense. So once we have understood these different laws which govern the gas, uh, which basically governs the pneumatic systems, next we can look into the pneumatic system uh, itself. So here, let us take an introduction to the pneumatic system. So the term pneumatics comes from the Greek word pneuma, which basically means wind or breath. 
So what it basically means is it refers to the use of compressed air or systems driven by compressed air in an engineering application. So as I mentioned earlier, in the pneumatic systems, we will be using compressed air as a medium to perform some mechanical work. So uh, the modern pneumatic system in automation technology basically consists of following subsystems. So if you take pneumatic systems as general, these four components or these four subsystems are part of any pneumatic circuit. So which are these? Number one, generation that is generating and providing the compressed air. So we need to uh, generate the compressed air first and need to provide this compressed air to various uh, devices. So this is the first subsystem. So this can be accomplished using compressors, radiators and filters etc. The second subsystem is distributing the compressed air. Right? So here you can make use of ducts, pneumatic tubing, coupling pieces etc. The third subsystem is controlling the compressed air. So here when we talk about controlling, we may have to control the pressure. So they are known as pressure regulator. We may have to control the direction of the flow of the air. So they are known as direction control walls or we may have to uh, completely stop the flow of air. So they are known as stop walls. So these are controlling the compressed air. And finally, all these three things are being performed basically to make some mechanical work, to perform some mechanical work. So you need some actuators which are basically cylinders or rotary drives for performing the work using the compressed air. So these are the four subsystems that are present in pneumatic systems. So if you have to remember this in the exams, my tip is you can simply use this term GDCP, G basically generation of air, D is the distribution of air, C is controlling of air and P is performing work. So if you remember this GDCP, I think you can elaborate uh, more on the subsystems of pneumatic systems. So next, let us look into the advantages of pneumatic systems. So to begin with, pneumatic systems are highly effective. They are durable and they are reliable. They are simple in design. They are relatively simple when we compare it with hydraulic systems. Uh, they also have high adaptability to harsh environment. They can easily be adapted to the harsh environment. They are safe to operate. And the reason for this is, so we are operating, we are using basically air as a medium. So air uh, doesn't basically uh, make any uh, messy surface if there are any leakages for instance it will not basically uh, create a lot of nuisance uh, there is no possibility of uh, you know fire or anything as such so they are safe to operate and uh, this uh, this safety also has uh, you know uh, the uh, uh, reference to overload protection of the pneumatic circuits. So since air is compressible, so there is no question of building up the pressure. So there is no question of, uh, you know, uh, uh, the pressure getting increased, uh, multi, multi, uh, or pressure getting multiplied or getting increased substantially beyond the capabilities of the tubes or beyond the capabilities of the ducts which are carry, carrying the air. So this will ensure there is no uh, explosions or there is no bursting of uh, the uh, the carriers or the mediums uh, so that is uh, something which is uh, which is very uh, very much important when it comes to the safety of the operation of the pneumatic systems next uh, you will uh, pneumatic systems are easy to select for the different speeds and different pressures uh, that is, uh, you know, uh, you can adapt the pneumatic systems for various speed and various different pressures. They are environmentally friendly. So as I told, since we are using 
compressed air so uh, the air which is drawn from the atmosphere is that is getting compressed and it is being used to perform some mechanical work after the work is performed the air is released back to the atmosphere so, so there is no question of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, affecting the environment so they are environmental friendly the only uh, the drawback of this uh, you know um, uh, you know uh, the uh, pneumatic systems would be the noise which they will create when the air is released back to the atmosphere so that will come under the disadvantage but overwhelmingly if we compare hydraulic systems pneumatic systems are environmental friendly so next you uh, can see economical so uh, since air is being used air is abundantly available so the the pneumatic systems are economical compared to that of hydraulic systems where oil is used overload protection as i already told the air is compressible so naturally there is no rapid build up of pressure so there is no rapid build up overloading so uh, this is something which is very much appreciated in industries cleanliness again something to do with uh, the the nature of the fluid itself so air is clean so cleanliness is the reason why pneumatic systems are preferred in some of the uh, you know industries such as let us say pharmaceutical industries where the uh, the room or the production line needs to be maintained uh, up to a particular uh, you know cleanliness uh, uh, levels so the air doesn't basically uh, um, you know make any uh, messy surfaces or you know the uh, unlike uh, oils they can uh, oils can leak and they can make a uh, surface messy and they can also affect uh, in terms of uh, catching fire and all those things all those problems does not occur with the pneumatic systems so it is uh, basically used uh, wherever there is a clean uh, cleanliness is of paramount importance next transportability is another advantage of pneumatic systems transportability basically means the air can be transported over a long distance suppose in an industry if you have a compressor a centralized compressor somewhere the air from the compressor can be distributed to various different departments with the help of the tubes or with the help of ducts so that is one of the most important advantages of uh, pneumatic systems which is transport transportability so next you have storage ability the air can be stored it is air can be compressed and it can be stored so that is there and finally high speed so high speed is basically the, the pneumatic systems are preferred uh, whenever the high speed actuations are required so that is another advantage one more advantage which i have not written here is uh, the uh, yeah so already have mentioned here economical uh, so uh, in industries pneumatic systems are basically considered as as a low cost automation systems so since they are economical in nature they are very widely used in low cost automation applications now let us look into the disadvantages now if you see the disadvantages or limitations of pneumatic systems so uh, the first disadvantage is they are relatively low in accuracy and the part of the reason for this is since air is compressible in nature uh, the uh, accuracy of the end actuators the will be poor compared to that of uh, hydraulic systems so it is low accurate and the load carrying capacity is always less compared to that of hydraulic systems so the load carrying capacity is basically function of two things as we know the cross sectional area of the actuators and the pressure itself so if i increase the pressure and if i go on increasing the area of the of the actuators the cylinders then i can uh, theoretically increase the uh, the force uh, that can be lifted by uh, um, uh, pneumatic systems but they do have certain limitations compared to hydraulic systems pneumatic systems do not uh, are not capable of lifting heavy loads 
that is the reason why you will not find uh, pneumatic systems being used as end, end applications uh, for earth moving equipment or wherever you need to lift heavy loads such as let us say press etc. Next, the, the, the processing is required before use. So since air which is being uh, used in the pneumatic systems is uh, taken from the atmosphere, so you may have to uh, process the air before they are being they, they, they are used for your uh, pneumatic systems. So that is known as uh, air servicing. So we will look into this in detail in, in, in a moment. The next is uneven moving speed. So this is something to do with the relative low accuracy. Again, it comes down to uh, the compressible compressibility of the air. So because air is compressible, it always results in uneven moving speed. And last but not the least, so you have a noise. Noise is another disadvantage of pneumatic systems since the air what after being utilized is released back to the atmosphere. When the air is released, it does make some noise and uh, this may create some nuisance. So naturally you can make use of some silencers or some mufflers to reduce the noise which is coming out from the pneumatic systems this is as a remedy for this particular limitations so broadly these are the advantages and limitations of pneumatic systems next let us look into the basic components of a pneumatic system so here as we uh, mentioned, the so first is the compressor. So uh, what I'm going to do is, you know, this figure, this is known as a pneumatic circuit. All these, these uh, elements, what you see, they are the symbolic representations of various components. Now, for example, the compressor, you see, this is the symbol of the compressor. And the compressor, the function is to compress the air that is to suck the air from the atmosphere and compress it and it will also have the tank where the air is compressed air is stored so next you have uh, air filters so you see this dotted line so this entire thing what is there inside it is basically known as air servicing unit it will basically consist of three things so what are these so it will have a filter Filter basically filters out any particles, suspended particles, uh, which, is, which are there in the air. And uh, these filters may also separate any water molecules that is present in the air. So this is filter. Then you have a regulator. The regulator, the function of the regulator is to regulate the amount of air that is being inlet into the pneumatic circuit then you have uh, you will obviously have the lubricators the lubricators are basically uh, are the systems uh, I'm, I'm not sure it is shown here uh, the lubricator so this probably uh, is not shown so there will be a lubricators the function of the lubricator is to uh, you know uh, provide a fine mist or mix a fine mist of oil with the air and this will help in reducing the friction uh, between the moving components in the pneumatic systems. Obviously, the lubricator is not shown in this, but they are very widely used in industries as well. So this is the pressure regulator. This is the symbol of the pressure regulator. Then you have an on-off valve. On-off valve, basically, as the name indicates, it will switch off or switch on the supply of this compressed air, which has been serviced. Right. So this is something like, you know, regulator, which you will find in your home, gas cylinders, you'll be having a regulator. The function of that is to just supply or cut off the supply of air or the gas. The same function is done by on off the valve in the pneumatic circuit. So next you have control valves. The control valves basically uh, there are three different uh, you know functions one is the flow uh, control of the direction next maybe control of the flow or controlling or the regulation of the air itself so this is the control 
wall this is a symbol of the control wall this is a symbol of a 3 by 2 uh, direction control wall which is push button manual push button with spring return so we will look into this you know these symbols how they are classified what is the nomenclature and all those things in a moment but the function of this control wall as the name indicates is controlling the pneumatic circuit itself so that is why they are known as control wall so you can see there is this is a switch a manual push button switch when you push this switch the air uh, the the wall will shift its position the air will be sent to a power wall the power wall is basically a wall which is directly connected to the actuator so you can see this this is an actuator so this is a single acting cylinder actuator so why it is called single acting because the actuation uh, it has only one port where you can provide the signal and the written stroke is basically as a result of the spring uh, the spring will you know uh, restore the uh, piston to its normal position when the air is uh, removed from this chamber right so that is why it is known as single acting cylinder so a power wall is something which is directly connected to the uh, the uh, actuators in this case the single acting cylinders the reason why it is called power wall is basically uh, uh, you know they are giving the power uh, they are providing the power to the cylinders and this power is being used for the actuation or the mechanical work so what happens is when you press this button the air gets moved to this particular uh, pilot uh, port of this particular wall and this wall will shift right and this wall has supply of air which is coming from the compressor the main compressor right now by default it is blocked when the air is received here this will shift to the right hand side and the air will be supplied to the uh, the the cylinder and the uh, piston will uh, you know actuate and will move forward and when the push button is released it will come back to its original state because there is a spring it will restore that and as a result here also when air is not present because of the spring it will come back to its default positions when it is in default positions the air gets exposed to the atmosphere so high pressure air you know uh, will get exhausted to the atmosphere which is just released to the atmosphere and as a result uh, the piston will retract backwards because of the spring spring will ensure the piston retract back to its original position so the power valve is basically used in industries very widely as per the size of the cylinder now if i have a big cylinder i cannot use a small valve to control the big cylinder so as a result i may have to use a big wall and uh, uh, this uh, is in turn sending the power to the cylinders the control signal can be actuated using a small wall such as maybe a direction control walls which is as shown in this figure so this entire setup what you see the figure in industries it is basically known as indirect actuation of the pneumatic uh, system the reason why it is called indirect actuation is basically you have this power wall if i remove this power wall and if the output of the control wall is directly given to the cylinder then it is referred to as direct actuation now let us move forward so power walls i have explained cylinders are the actuators where the entire uh, the setup once uh, you know it, the air reaches the actuators the op the main objective is to uh, perform the mechanical work so that is what the actuators will do actuators are again maybe a single acting or double acting or they are rotary actuators right now what you see here they are linear actuators rotary actuators can also be used in the system so these are the various different components which are present in the pneumatic systems so what we are going to do is we are going to uh, 
take up these one by one quickly and go through them uh, you know we can identify them you can identify the symbol and all those things so let us first take up the compressor so compressor uh, this is how it looks like so compressors may be single stage compressors or multi-stage compressors this is the starters so now you uh, know what is a compressor the compressor can compress the air to required pressure so air from the atmosphere is sucked and it is compressed to the required pressure so in other words it can convert the mechanical energy from the motors and engines into potential energy in the compressed air so this is how the compressor looks like and this is the symbol of the compressor usually uh, in in the uh, education field whatever the trainer kits that we may have we will be having compressors which is operated up to a pressure of eight bars and in industries it obviously depends on various applications so the pressures may be uh, the, the operating pressure may be much higher so next you have a uh, air service unit so these are basically as i told you filters regulators and lubricators a filter can remove impurities so this is the filter you can see this this is sorry this is the filter so uh, the objective of using this is to remove any impurities uh, in the air before it is fed to the pneumatic components next you have a regulator the regulator is basically used to stabilize the pressure regulate the operation of pneumatic components so you uh, you know the compressor may be supplying the air at a particular uh, pressure but if you want to increase uh, if you want to reduce the pressure not increase of course the regulator cannot uh, amplify the pressure but if you want to reduce the pressure obviously you can uh, use this regulator to set the required amount of pressure to be supplied to the pneumatic circuit that is pressure regulator finally you have lubricator lubricator provides lubrication uh, for the various components so these are the symbols iso symbols of the filter this is a regulator with a pressure gauge and this is the lubricator so next let us look into the walls now what are walls so uh, if you see uh, the concept of wall is not new i mean biologically our heart basically consists of various walls right so these are the different walls you have pulmonary walls these are the tracheospid walls biological walls all these walls basically have specific applications right and uh, what they are controlling they are controlling the flow of direction of blood in the in, in the human body and uh, you know just like a human uh, just like a walls that are present in the human heart you will be using you will be using mechanical walls for performing various functions such as to change the flow direction to change flow rate and to change fluid pressure right so these are the three different uh, applications of using the valves so flow direction basically means you may have to change the direction of flow of air change of flow rate basically the amount of air being supplied you may have to change it you may have to regulate it or you may have to uh, uh, you know regulate the pressure at which the air is supplied so that is change in the fluid pressure so these are the functions of the walls that are used in the pneumatic circuit so if you see the tap that is present in the wash basin in your homes so can you just tell you know what are the different functions this particular uh, you know, tap will perform so obviously it is controlling the flow of uh, water so uh, it may control the flow rate right you may increase or decrease uh, the amount of water that is released from the from the tap uh, of this particular systems right so that is just a simple example of a wall which is used in the home so now that we have understood the walls let us uh, look into the different types of walls now when we talk about direction control wall 
we as i mentioned direction control valves ensure the flow of air between airports uh, by opening closing and switching their internal connections in other words they control the flow of direction of air in a pneumatic circuit so that is the uh, uh, you know application or the uh, requirement of the direction control valves in pneumatic systems we make use of certain nomenclature to describe the type of valves so for example uh, you know you may quite a lot here the term let us say phi by 2 phi by 2 direction control valves so what is this phi and what is this 2 what is what are they indicating so this phi indicates the number of ports whereas 2 indicates number of positions so phi ports operated over two positions so that is the meaning of this phi by 2 direction control valves so how they are represented so they are represented symbolically using this so you can see this two box if you find two box it represents two positions right so this position one this position two and then the port has uh, the the wall has five ports so you can see one two three four five so these are the five ports which are basically present right so that is how we will be representing the five by two uh, or uh, you know uh, any wall for that matter will be representing in terms of this nomenclature so the numerator represents the number of ports the denominator represents the number of positions let us move forward and take up different types of uh, walls so first let us say two by two direction control wall so two by two as the name indicates two ports operating over two positions right so this is quite familiar uh, uh, for us uh, this symbol if you observe two boxes indicates two positions and there are two ports one port is this the other port is that right so there are basically two ports so how this operates so this is how it looks like you know physically so it has two ports and uh, uh, you know the working of this is very simple so uh, if you can see uh, this uh, this particular port uh, basically has two uh, uh, this particular wall basically has two ports that is uh, uh, you know this is port uh, a working tube port and this is the inlet port inlet port is a port where you will be applying the pressured air and uh, the outlet port is the actuation port so if i apply the pressure here in this portion if what happens when air gets filled up this chamber it will push this ball against the wall seats right this ball is pressed against the wall of the walls and as a result the air will not be able to move to the working tube or to the output so in order to uh, um, actuate this i'll use some switch i'll press this and as a result this will push the ball bottom against the spring force and that will give some passage for the air to flow to the working tube right so this is the basic uh, uh, principle of working of two by two direction control wall so you can see these arrow marks which are present inside these two boxes they indicate the function so if you have two ports so uh, the first uh, you know box indicates a straight arrow mark that means the port one that is the inlet port is directly connected to the outlet port on the other hand the second position if you see this t symbol t symbol indicates the port is blocked that means port a or sorry the port inlet port p is not connected to the actuation port they are blocked so that is the meaning of this symbol so that is two by two direction control wall so similarly you will come across different types of walls here we have three by two walls again we have three ports two positions so you can see this so two boxes indicate two positions and three ports 
so this is one this is two this is three right three ports are present so this can be utilized uh, again in terms of two configurations one is normally closed type the other one is normally open type right so uh, again uh, here you can see here you have a simple example of normally closed type uh, 3 by 2 direction control walls so uh, in this if you see if I give inlet air into this the air will push this ball against these walls this, these walls and the air will not be able to reach to the other side working tube right so uh, what I will do uh, I will basically uh, actuate these walls using some mechanisms uh, when I press this when I press the uh, the uh, uh, actuate uh, the wall this will again push this ball against the spring force that will provide some passage for the air to move towards the working tube right so when the air comes to the working tube uh, in, in return so uh, it can easily uh, it has two direction in which it can move it can push the ball downwards right when the air is given in this it can push the ball downwards or the air can escape to the atmosphere using these exhaust ports so air will always take the path of least resistance so as a result the air will easily pass through the exhaust port right so that is basically 3 by 2 direction control wall so next uh, you know, I'd like to describe the 5 by 2 direction control walls so in this we will be having five different ports operated over two different directions so this is how it looks like if you see the uh, the con the physical component uh, we can see this these are the ports these are the output ports this is an input port and these two are the exhaust ports right so this is basically one five three four and two that is how they are named basically right and uh, you see these two things these are basically the filters or uh, no, sorry they are mufflers basically to uh, muffle the exhaust noise when the air is released back to the atmosphere right so these two are the 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 uh, exhaust ports and i believe these are for the pilot port so which which is which we're not looking to at the moment uh, these two are the exhaust port the center one is the inlet port and these two are the outlet port the symbol for this is as follows and uh, i would like to uh, spend a little bit more time in describing how this functions so let me take up this so 5 by 2 direction control wall has two positions right so the physical construction of this will be like this so if you take out the cross section area so you can see this this is how it looks like it will be having ports here this is port one two three i mean number of ports i'm counting not the naming so it has three ports there it has two ports here so totally five ports so internally you have these uh, you know the uh, these spools we call these as spools which in turn helps in connecting uh, the input to various output ports now uh, if you just see this figure so let me first uh you know explain what is happening over here you have this wall body you have these five ports right so you have if you just count them one two three four five right so let me just now uh, describe this so let us say this is inlet port port number one this is port number three uh why it is blocked i'll explain it in a moment then this is known as exhaust port and uh, this these are the two ports which four and two so five ports now suppose if i in the default position position one when the air is supplied to port one we can see the air enters this and it is sent to port two so there is no other way the air can move because they are blocked by these spools right so whatever air that may be present in the cylinder on the other side may get exhausted or they may return to fourth port and the fourth port as you can see is now is connected to the fifth 
port and the air is getting released or exhausted to the atmosphere the port number three on the other hand you know you can see you know this is not connecting to any other port because you know of this spool which is present so as a result the port number three is completely blocked so this is what is going to happen in the uh, default position position one now when i shift the position of the of the wall to the second position right so so let us see what will happen so in the second position you can see the initial position wall is like this so i'll just push this entire spool to the right left hand side so so you can see now this is in the second position in the second position as you can see the air inlet right now is is uh, this is how it is so three uh, will be exhaust five will be blocked one always remains the inlet and four and two are present so when i supply the air to the inlet it will be connecting to the fourth port and the air which may be present in the other side of the cylinder may get exhausted it is connected to the second port the second port is connected to the port number three and air is getting released at the port number three so this is acting like an exhaust port whereas port number five is right now is not connected to anything so as a result it is blocked right so this is how uh, basically the uh, the 5 by 2 direction control wall works i hope this uh, gives you and some intuitive idea on the functioning of different types of walls so uh, in in uh, industries all the walls are represented using various symbols so i would uh, request you you can pause the screen for a moment and you can observe these different types of walls their designations and their functioning so all the different types of walls are actuated uh, using some means so for example they can be mechanically actuated using rollers or manually actuated using push button switch or they can be actuated using solenoids uh, they can be actuated solenoids on both the sides or they can be actuated by using pneumatics or as a combination of both solenoid and pneumatics so i would advise you again you can pause the screen and just have a look at the symbols and designation and the function which is described for the various actuation methods of direction control walls so that's that's about it so this is this covers the part one of the pneumatic systems still uh, we are left with part two which i'm going to cover in the next video right so thank you